Zinc is one of my favourite minerals, but not just for immune health. It surprises many women that it's one of the best nutrients for hormonal health. So stay tuned if you would like to learn about how zinc can help regulate your hormones during your menopausal transition. You're listening to Menopause Natural Solutions, Episode 120, Zinc for Menopause. Welcome to Menopause Natural Solutions, your podcast for all things perimenopause, menopause and beyond. Stay tuned as your host, naturopath Jennifer Harrington, explains how to use natural therapies to find your ultimate health and happiness during your transition. Well, hello there. Today's a great day. I get to talk about one of my favorite topics, minerals, and in particular, zinc. Many of you have probably heard of zinc over the last few years. It is a wonderful consideration when it comes to immune health. But even with its benefits becoming more widely known, it's still thought that about 50% of the population is deficient in this marvelous mineral. Zinc is primarily found in animal sources, so vegans and vegetarians are at the greatest risk of deficiency. Let's start with some general uses of zinc. As mentioned before, zinc is one of the first nutrients to consider for immune health. We need adequate zinc to produce immune-specific cells such, such as neutrophils and lymphocytes. It plays a role in both supporting your innate and your required immunity. It is needed for all of your special senses. Think taste, smell, sight and hearing. Interestingly, the largest amount of zinc can be found in your ears and the second highest concentration in your eyes. So if you want to continue to enjoy the finer things in life, like vision and hearing, you may like to check you have optimal levels of this mineral. Zinc also plays a crucial role in skin and mucous membrane health. Skin is the drier external version of your inner mucous membranes. Both of these structures I think of as being like a brick wall or a barrier. They help keep your insides in and keep everything else out. Zinc is a key building block here. I imagine it as being the bricks in the wall and I consider your good oils as being the mortar that holds it all in place. Signs your skin needs more zinc includes acne, stretch marks, poor healing in general. Signs your mucous membranes need more zinc include dryness as zinc can help improve the ability to self-lubricate. I'm not sure if you put the two and two together, but your female reproductive system has a mucus lining. There has actually been a successful pilot study looking at using a zinc-based gel to help restore vaginal lubrication. Due to its success, it's now moving to a larger size clinical trial and comparing this with vaginal estrogen. I'm really excited to see those results. For the time being, zinc isn't something I would self-apply, so don't try this at home, ladies. For those of you who are still menstruating, zinc deficiency can also cause heavier, more painful periods and leave you at greater risk of developing uterine fibroids. Next week, I'm hosting a Minerals for Menopause webinar as part of Natural Medicine Week here in Australia. I'm excited to possibly meet a few of you online and to answer your mineral-related questions. I'll leave the link in the show notes in case you want to join in, but I wanted to let you know the webinar will be much more detailed than this podcast episode, and I'll walk you through some of the clinical trials and explain what the results mean. Don't worry if you can't make the session, as it will be recorded and I have produced an ebook to accompany the presentation. But let me tell you about one more study for today. This looked at testosterone levels and sexual satisfaction. 
it found that zinc had a significant impact on improving libido, sexual function, and satisfaction in postmenopausal women. It's possibly why oysters are linked to romance, as they are a leading source of dietary zinc. When it comes to other aspects of hormonal health, it depends on where you sit in your transition. If you are in perimenopause, we need zinc to help with the production of FSH, or follicle-stimulating hormone, and LH, which is luteinizing hormone. These two key hormones help regulate our cycles and stimulate ovarian production of our reproductive hormones. If you are in postmenopause, it is needed for aromatase activity. Aromatase is the enzyme responsible for the conversion of androgens into estrogens, and this is the primary form of estrogen from postmenopause onwards. Have you been experiencing hair loss? Zinc plays an important role in keeping oil glands surrounding your hair follicle healthy, and this may reduce hair loss in women. One of the most significant concerns in postmenopause is osteoporosis. Did you know zinc deficiency is linked with poor bone density? Another concern is sarcopenia. This is the loss of muscle mass, and if you guess zinc deficiency plays a role here too, you would be correct. You are probably wondering by now if it's possible to test for your zinc levels to assess if you need to increase this essential nutrient, and the answer is yes. There are many ways to do this, but I standardly use a blood test to assess for zinc levels. But I don't just test for zinc. I normally do a zinc and copper ratio test. This lets me assess both nutrients and the ratio between them as zinc and copper work in opposition to each other. I have seen scenarios where zinc looks good, but the copper was through the roof, creating a relative zinc deficiency, and I wouldn't have noticed this if I didn't look. This isn't a standard blood marker. It's a specialty test that not many providers use, but I personally find it extremely helpful. I hope I have piqued your curiosity about zinc and minerals in general. If you are ready to learn more, you may like to join me next week for the minerals webinar. That's it for today. I hope you have fallen in love with zinc, but please note, I don't encourage self-prescription. Every supplement, even natural ones, have cautions, interactions, and contra-interactions. You may laugh, but as a student, I overdid zinc, and the hours of nausea and vomiting that came afterwards wasn't fun. I have learnt that more isn't necessarily better. So take care out there, and please seek professional advice. Bye for now. Menopause Natural Solutions. This podcast contains general information about menopause. It is provided as a guide and it is not intended to replace medical advice. Opinions of guests are their own and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. If you have enjoyed today's episode, please share it with a friend.